most security related tools are focused on static scanning. We scan code and artifacts for vulnerabilities and misconfigurations. We get depressed when we look at reports. We fix a few issues, we give up on thousands of others, and we move on. Now, while static scanning is important, it is not enough or sometimes not even relevant. Security scanning is like a doctor that can only look at your blood and urine samples, but cannot see you in person, nor it can correlate the results. Knowing that your blood pressure is above or below a normal range is useful but not necessarily relevant without understanding the context of that blood pressure. Do you exercise? Do you smoke? Do you eat healthy food? Do you have a stressful job? Or do you have a teenager at home that drives you nuts? The same can be said for security. Getting security issues based on code or artifacts is useful, but only once we start running that code we can make sure that we are secure. Only by observing what is running, which processes are being created, who is doing what, and by observing other types of runtime events, we can make sure that we are secure. What I'm really, really, really trying to say is that we need a security solution that is running side by side with our applications, watching what is happening, and alerting us when something suspicious is going on. Or, here it goes, even better, prevent it from happening in the first place. Now, when real-time threat detection is concerned, there is only one, one tool that sticks out of the crowd. There is one tool that is considered a standard for runtime security. And that tool is... Ta -da -da, Falco. We will explore it in a second, but before we dig into it, I must give you a TLDR. Falco drives me crazy. I hate working with it. Yet there is no other tool that I would recommend more than Falco. It is a tool I hate, yet I find it indispensable and a must-have for any company that cares about security. Let's see it in action and observe the level of frustration it will generate today. I already have an application packaged as a container image and running in a Kubernetes cluster. Now, let's say that we want to, what should we do? Prevent a malicious user from doing damage to our system after managing to enter into one of the containers. That would be the scenario. One of the ways we can do that is by being alerted when a new process is spawned from inside that container. Now, I already have such a rule defined with Falco and running inside the cluster. I should be safe, right? Actually, with what I did, I will not be safe at all, but I will be alerted when something like that happens. Whether that is good enough or not is something we will discuss later. For now, let's see what will happen if I try to spawn a new process from inside one of the application containers. I will simulate such a situation by executing ls command inside the container. The output shows all the files and directories in the root directory of the container. Nothing, and I say nothing, prevented me from spawning a new process inside that container. That's to be expected since Falco alone is not about prevention, but rather about detection of anomalies that might result in a security breach. I can see that Falco detected the event by looking at the logs. To avoid being overwhelmed with all the events, I will filter them by the notice label. And since the output is in JSON format, I will format it with JQ. No, not JQ. Yes, with JQ. We can see from the output that Falco detected that the shell was spawned in a container together with all the relevant information like the namespace, the pod, and the container where the process 
was spawned together with all the other information we might or might not need. So, and this is important, we, I, did not prevent malicious user from doing something that should not be done. But we, I, became aware of it. Keep in mind that we saw the event directly in the Falco logs and there are many, many, many other ways we can receive notifications. We will explore those later. Now, let's take a look at the rules that Falco is using to detect threats. Specifically, I want to see those that are already loaded into Falco running in my cluster. So, we'll retrieve all the pods in the Falco namespace, store the name of one of the pods as the pod environment variable, and execute cut command to see the content of the etc falco falco rules yaml file. Now, as you can see, there are quite a few rules already defined, and all those are the default rules that come with falco out of the box. A quick look at all those might make you dizzy. So I copied them, uh, not them, a few of those into a separate file. They will help us focus on a few rules and explore them in more detail. So let's take a look at the rules example YAML file that contains a few of those I would like to discuss today. Falco rules have a specific anatomy. It starts with a rule that is a short and a unique name of the rule itself. It's a bit confusing that names can be anything, including spaces, yet also they should be unique. Um, anyway, that does not matter. There's not much more to it, so let's move to the description or desk, which is, in the, as the name implies, only a description and serves no specific purpose beyond being informative. Now we are coming to the important part of the rule. The condition field contains a filtering expression that is applied against events to check whether they match the rule. In other words, if the expression evaluates to true, the rule is considered matched and we get an alert, which can be in many different forms. Then comes the output, which specifies the message that should be output if the condition is true. The rest of the spec is less exciting. We have priority, which can be emergency, alert, critical error, warning, notice, informational, and what uh, debug. Enabled is self-explanatory and tags are mostly informative. There are a few other, often less commonly used, uh, fields we can specify. Most of the time, we are trying to deduce which syscall event happened and what is the direction of the event. You can see the list of all the supported events in the Falco documentation. Now, once you start writing rules, you will quickly realize that they often contain parts that are repeatable. In this example, we are, among other things, trying to deduce whether a process spawned. You can imagine that might be something we would use in more than one rule. Hence, spawn process is a macro with its own conditions. That enables us to just reference a macro through uh, its name inside the rule conditions and avoid repetition. And now comes the important part. The syntax for writing rules is easy and straightforward. Anyone, and I repeat, anyone can learn it in no time. However, writing rules themselves is tedious, since that means that you need to understand in depth which processes are being executed in your system and which of those are legitimate and which are not how to distinguish between those, which direction matters in a given context, and so on and so forth. You need you to know what's going on on a low, very low level. What I'm really trying to say is that it takes no time to learn the syntax, but a lot of time to figure out which rules we need, which processes should be involved in those rules and everything else. If you're starting to write rules, all I can say is have patience and good luck. You'll need it. Now, not everything is doom and gloom when rules are concerned. Falco comes with an extensive list of rules loaded by default, so you can just use them as they are. That will probably result in a massive 
number of false positives, since many of them might not apply to you or not to all cases. So your second task will be probably to disable those that are not relevant to you or modify those that are not exactly what you need. The real pain starts later when you do start writing your rules, but by that time you will be more experienced and more comfortable with Falco. So that problem will somehow be mitigated with time. Now, let's move to a sub-project called Falco Sidekick. It is a very important one since it enables us to connect Falco to our ecosystem. Looking at outputs in container logs or other places supported by Falco itself is not very useful. With the Sidekick, we can send Falco events to a chat ship them to one of the observability tools, use them with whatever we normally use for alerting, ship them as logs, store them in object storage, use them to trigger serverless functions, and uh, send them to message queues, and so on and so forth. Falco Sidekick is so extensive that we can leverage Falco events through almost any other tool we might be using. And that, that is absolutely awesome. And if that is not enough, there are also plugins that enable us to extend Falco with additional functionality. And now that we have a very high level view of Falco and its sidekick, let's talk about uh, its pros and cons, what it's good for and whether you should use it. Falco is truly, truly awesome and a golden standard for alerting uh, on runtime events. It is indispensable for any company trying to be more secure. Yet, Falco will not make you more secure. It does not prevent malicious activities. It will not stop anyone from spawning processes, opening files that should not be opened, or any other activity that might result in a security breach. Falco does not prevent anything. It makes us aware of what's going on and it all depends on us or other tools to figure out how to prevent those activities. When used alone, it is almost useless. Knowing that something bad is happening and not acting on it makes me depressed. What that means is that we need to combine Falco with other tools that will do something based on events generated by Falco. We could, for example, use Falco Sidekick to send a request to a process that will block the execution of a process that should not be executed. Right? Well, no, that would be too late. By that time, the process that should not be executed is already running. Damage is already done. Someone stole something. Someone or something saw what should not be seen. Someone or something, you know, etc., etc. You get the point. It is too late. Does that mean that Falco is useless? Not at all. All that means that we should use Falco for what it is designed for. It gives us an overview of what's going on at a low level. That overview is not good by itself, but it could be used to recalibrate what other tools are doing. For example, you might notice that someone is spawning new processes and that you failed to block that. The damage was done and there is no point crying over spilled milk. However, even if you failed to act today, does not mean that we could not prevent such a thing from happening in the future. Falco gives us awareness that we can use to design our systems better. We could, for example, use the information from Falco to define additional rules for cube armor that will be blocking those processes in the future. What Falco gives us is observability that gives us data that we can use in the future. Just as information about an outage is often not very helpful in preventing that specific outage, it already happened after all, it does help us to prevent future outages or at least to reduce the probability of future outages. Falco is similar. It does not prevent security issues, but it does provide information that can be used to prevent future security issues, and that prevention should be done with other tools. Now you might say, hey, hey, stop. 
I want a full solution that will not only discover security issues, but also prevent them. What you should know in that case is that Falco is a project SysDig donated to Cloud Native Computing Foundation or CNCF. That means that it is not just an open source project, but that it is not owned by a single company, but a foundation. What that means is that it is safe for other projects and companies to build on top of it. And quite a few do. You might be using Falco without knowing it. It might be a part of a commercial solution you are using right now. All in all, Falco is extremely powerful and flexible, but also very low level type of a solution with the scope limited to awareness rather than prevention. And I just realized that I already uh, went through most of the pros and cons of Falco. So let me keep this short. There are two main cons of Falco. One, writing rules is tedious and cryptic and requires a lot of knowledge of the underlying system. And two, it is mostly focused on alerting and not prevention. We need other tools to prevent processes from being executed, uh, traffic flows, and so on and so forth. Tools like Cube Armor, Service Mesh, and others might be uh, combined with Falco. And here comes the thing. If you do something like that, we would use those other tools to prevent malicious activities and Falco to alert us when something we did not foresee happens, or to put it differently, we can use Falco as the last line of defense. As for pros, I will start by saying that Falco has a very, very extensive list of rules loaded by default, and that might be all you need, at least in the beginning. In that case, you will not be faced with the issues of writing rules yourself, at least not right away. Second, rules engine has a very easy to understand and learn syntax. Now, that might be confusing since I said that writing rules is tedious and cryptic, but that's not because of the syntax, but rather because of the knowledge and experience required to write those rules. The knowledge and experience of how the system works at a low level. And the third one is that Falco is the standard for runtime security alerting. It is free, it is owned by the CNCF Foundation, and it's used in quite a few other tools. All in all, if you need a runtime security alerting tool, Falco is the way to go. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.